we will end our overview of the educational landscape in Germany with the quaternary sector. After elementary school, secondary school, vocational training and university, we now come to the fourth part, the Volkshochschule, literally People's High School, an adult education center. Starting in England in the 19th century, a university expansion movement spread, which was intended to bring further education closer to the common people without formalities. The first Volkshochschule was founded in 1844 by the Danish priest, educator and philosopher Nikolai Frederik Severin Grundvik in Röding, Denmark. A Heim Volkshochschule, a residential adult education center, is an adult education center with boarding or overnight accommodation. This Scandinavian model takes a slightly different approach to the Volkshochschule in Germany However, the term was adopted. In the Weimar Republic, the Volkshochschule was included in the Constitution in 1919. Article 148 of the Weimar Constitution stated, Public education, including the Volkshochschulen, shall be promoted by the Reich, the states and the municipalities. At that time, the Volkshochschule was also a way to get the large number of unemployed people off the streets and into further education. Even if the word Hochschule suggests that it is an university, this is not the case. But what can you learn at a Volkshochschule? In short, everything. In 1920, there were 15 courses at the Volkshochschule Offenbach. Sociology, philosophy, constitution, taxes, chemistry, physics, art history, arts and crafts, economics, accounting, balance sheet, commercial science, music, women's issues and venereal diseases. There was already a wide range back then and it's even wider today. A very important point is that it's possible to catch up on any school leaving qualification. Whether you didn't get the chance to complete your secondary school certificate or you now want to have the Abitur in order to study at university, this is possible at various Volkshochschulen. There are also numerous courses on working life, from application training to typing or controlling and cost and performance accounting to training trainers to be able to train apprentices themselves. But there are also courses on art and hobbies such as pottery, painting, perhaps new drawings of photography, as well as cooking courses or outdoor activities from identifying herbs and mushrooms to walking and forest bathing. Some courses are full-time, but many take place in the evening and at weekends so that working people can also find the time to attend. Volkshochschulen are also very strong in the area of languages. Here you can learn German as a foreign language as well as numerous other language skills. The price of the courses vary greatly from free to few hundreds to sometimes a few thousand euros. It depends on the type of course and the length. And it also depends on how the Volkshochschulen are financed. Volkshochschulen are supported by grants from the federal state, the municipality and the county, as well as by participant fees and donation and so-called third-party funds, which can be funding from the federal government or the federal employment agency, but also from the European Union. In principle, there are Volkshochschulen in every county and usually in every larger town. Smaller towns and municipalities often join together. Larger cities often have their own Volkshochschulen. In total, there are almost 900 Volkshochschulen in Germany. However, not every offer is available everywhere and the offers can differ from state to state and region to region. The local events are also often different. 
the individual Volkshochschulen in the larger states are grouped together in a state association, which in turn are members of the Deutsche Volksschule Verband, the German Adult Education Association with around 900 Volkshochschulen, the DVV, is the largest provider of continuing education in Germany. The DVV also has international corporations in more than 30 countries. It is also a member of the European Association of the Education of Adults and the International Council of Adult Education. In principle, this type of further education for adults is an international affair. Educational leave is a special feature in many parts of Germany. In 1974, the Federal Republic of Germany signed an international agreement of the International Labour Organization to grant employees paid leave for further training. However, as it is again the educational sovereignty of the federal states, the federal states had to pass their own laws on this. In 14 federal states, there is therefore an entitlement to at least five days paid time off to take part in professional or political training, sometimes correspondingly less for part-time employees who work less than five days a week. Only Bavaria and Saxony have no such laws. So, if you want to catch up on your school leaving qualification, learn a language or otherwise continue your lifelong learning, the Volkshochschulen are the place to go. And if the course is good for work or political education, you usually get paid leave for it. What would you like to learn? That was the end of our overview of education opportunities in Germany. If I missed anything you would like to know about, write it in the comments. Thank you for your attention. I will see you in the next video.